Okay, today is April, April 11th? Yep, today is April 11th. It's about 7.10 right now. At around 7 o'clock, um, when I was coming around to pass out biscuits, I saw a little head on Michelle's back, and I looked closely, and it indeed was a newborn baby. Though an accident, though heartwarming, another monkey born behind bars is tragic. At least now, this baby will not be stolen from her mother's arms. At least now, this bond will never be broken. Did you ever wish your child would never grow up? Imagine looking after a toddler for the next 40 years. She's my kid for the rest of my life. For some families, this is a reality, their very own forever baby, a monkey baby. Primatologist Catherine C. McKinnon has been studying capuchins in the wild for the last 17 years. She has observed firsthand in the jungles of Costa Rica just how different their lives are away from concrete and diapers. Capuchins are found in Central and South America, um, and generally they live in pretty complex social groups with lots of individuals, different ages, both sexes. Capuchins are very active primates, and they spend a large part of their day um, actively foraging and looking for food. So a capuchin that's housed in a living room or even you know, a relatively large outdoor enclosure is not natural. Today, most pet capuchins are bred in captivity in North America. Backyard breeding of exotic animals as pets is a multi-million dollar business nowadays. And for monkeys, it's a highly unnatural process. When you have females that are used as breeding monkeys, that is, they're sped up in terms of their reproductive timelines, um, it's very unnatural and can have some serious consequences, not only for the infant that's taken, but for that mother as well. The breeders take the babies within a few days. They steal them from as early as three days old. Capuchin monkeys will live on their mother's back and nurse for up to two years. One of the hallmarks of being a primate, uh, indeed being a mammal, is a strong mother-infant bond. So, for example, if a monkey is pulled from its mother at, say, three days of age, you get the classic uh, rocking, tail sucking, hair pulling, biting, these repetitive uh, behaviors that infants do not do in wild groups. Breeders say that the earlier they pull babies from their biological mums, the better they bond with their human mums. It's time for some monkey business. And his price is 55. Okay. Baby George costs 5,500 US dollars. Most young babies would sell for between five and eight thousand dollars. If you, 
There you go. Thank you, ma'am. Do you not feel a bit guilty taking the babies away from the mom? No, not at all. They know that in the first 30 days, I'm going to take that baby. Um, and by that time, they're kind of over it anyway. There's two moms over there that's been with me for 19 years. Wow. When they see me with a net, <laughs> and their history. This is your mama. This is your mama. Oh, my goodness me. What do you think? Hello. Oh, he's so beautiful. Oh, George. Sanctuary founder Carrie Bagnall runs Jungle Friends, a large primate sanctuary in Florida. Here, Travis. They usually come in pretty bad shape. We've had them come in almost dead. So it's, yeah, it's really a, a tough thing to try to keep them alive. They currently have nearly 120 monkeys and have a waiting list for many more, but they are full. Normally, they should stay on their moms for at least nine weeks, not leave their mom's bodies for nine weeks. And then they stay strongly bonded for at least three years. Um, but that bond was broken in three days. Um, and then they were sold by a breeder to a woman that didn't have a license to have them. So then they were confiscated from her, taken in by animal services, transferred to the zoo, and then eventually transported here. So they've been through a lot just in a few months of life. And look what happens to them in captivity. You've been around Jungle Friends long enough to see the weird diseases they get, the diabetes. And that doesn't happen in the wild. Mm -mm. These guys especially. And these cute guys here. Diabetes, heart disease, cancer, autoimmune disease. When they're just babies, yep. three, four, five years old. That's not right. Mm -hmm. And dying at early ages. And it's all stress-related diseases or um, immune deficiency diseases. Well, they don't have the benefit of mama's milk. They don't have mama's milk. And they have that early stress, which right. traumatizes their system. And the stress their moms go through, right. that affects them as they're, they're developing pregnant. as fetuses. Mm. Seventy percent of them are expats, so the big problem we have right now are the expat problem. Monkey parents tend to dump their monkeys when they start biting. I have never had so many calls as I get right now for monkeys needing homes. Once they bite the kids or tear up the house or escape to the neighbor's yard and tear up the neighbor, they just want the monkeys gone. This is George, and George lives with Jill. Neither one of them have any teeth. Uh, all of their teeth were removed. They probably bit the wrong person. The monkey community uses alterations to make the monkeys less dangerous. I recommend that people alter the monkeys. If they're going to have them in a family setting, please alter your monkeys. When you have small children, would you rather have a ripping, tearing bite, or would you rather have a bruise? It's up to you. Many vets refuse to remove healthy teeth from an animal, so the monkey community have to find certain vets who will perform the operation. It needs to be federally that you cannot have a pet wild animal. They, it's wrong. It's wrong, wrong, wrong. Wrong for the monkeys, wrong for the humans, wrong in every sense of the word. And although humans and monkeys are all primates, their natural habitat is worlds away from ours.